my brothers and sisters in Christ. Most of the week and just another bright new day with all its opportunities for pleasing Him. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. begins on page 33 of our Books of Common Prayer with our opening sentence and continues on page 35 and following. Lord, open my lips that my mouth may proclaim your praise. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. We pray together. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. 
You'll be ninety. Who oh, can we just sing out to the Lord? Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands mold the dry land. Come let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We come now to this point where we open our hearts, acknowledging that we have fallen short of God's expectations of us and asking for God's forgiveness. So we pray together. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we come to our Psalms appointed for today, two Psalms, Psalm 140 and Psalm 142. Psalm 140 begins at the bottom of page 655 and 142 on page 657. We will say the Psalms one after the other. Deliver me, O Lord, from evil doers. Protect me from the violent who devise evil in their hearts and stir up strife all day long. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Others' poison is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from the violent who are determined to trip me up. The proud have hidden a snare for me and stretched out a net of cords. They set traps for me along the path. I have said to the Lord, You are my God. Listen, O Lord, to my supplication. O Lord God, the strength of my salvation. You have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant the desires of the wicked, O Lord, nor let their evil plans prosper. Let not those who surround me lift up their heads. Let the evil of their lips overwhelm them. Let hot burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the mire, never to rise up again. A slanderer shall not be established on the earth, and evil shall hunt down the lawless. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the poor and render justice to the needy. Surely the righteous will give thanks to your name, and the upright shall continue in your sight. I cry to the Lord with my voice. To the Lord I make loud supplication. I pour out my complaint before him and tell him all my trouble. When my spirit languishes within me, you know my path. In the way wherein I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. I look to my right hand and find no one who knows me. I have no place to flee to and no one cares for me. I cry out to you, O Lord, I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry for help. Why have been brought very low? Save me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. When you have dealt bountifully with me, the righteous will gather around me. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We come now to our first reading. And our first reading is from Second Samuel. And we are reading from chapter 19, verses 24 to 43. Second Samuel, chapter 19, verses 24 to 43. Mephibosheth, grandson of Saul, came down to meet the king. He had not taken care of his feet or trimmed his beard or washed his clothes from the day the king left until the day he came back to safety. When he came from Jerusalem to meet the king, the king said to him, Why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? He answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me. For your servant said to him, Saddle a donkey for me, so that I may ride on it and go with the king. For your servant is lame. He has slandered your servant to my lord the king. But my lord the king is like the angel of God. Do therefore what seems good to you. For all my father's house were doomed to death before my lord the king. But you set your servant among those who eat at your table. What further right have I then to appeal to the king? The king said to him, Why speak any more of your affairs? I have decided. You and Ziba shall divide the land. Mephibosheth said to the king, Let him take it all, since my lord the king has arrived home safely. Now Barzillai the Gileadite had come down from Rogelim, he went on with the king to the Jordan to escort him over the Jordan. Basilai was a very aged man, 80 years old. He had provided the king with food while he stayed at Mahanim, for he was a very wealthy man. The king said to Basilai, Come over with me, and I will provide for you in Jerusalem at my side. But Basilai said to the king, How many years have I still to live, that I should go up with the king to Jerusalem? Today I am eighty years old. Can I discern what is pleasant and what is not? Can your servant taste what he eats or what he drinks? Can I still listen to the voice of singing men and singing women? Why then should your servant be an added burden to my lord the king? Your servant will go a little way over the Jordan with the king. Why should the king recompense me with such a reward? Please let your servant return, so that I may die in my own town, near the graves of my father and my mother. But here is your servant, Shimham. Let him go over with my lord the king, and do for him whatever seems good to you. The king answered, Shimham shall go over with me, and I will do for him whatever seems good to you, and all that you desire of me I will do for you. Then all the people crossed over the Jordan, and the king crossed over. The king kissed Basilai and blessed him, and he returned to his own home. The king went on to Gilgal, and Shimham went on with him. All the people of Judah and also half the people of Israel brought the king on his way. Then all the people of Israel came to the king and said to him, Why have our kindred, the people of Judah, stolen you away and brought the king and his household over the Jordan and all David's men with him? All the people of Judah answered the people of Israel, Because the king is near of kin to us. Why then are you angry over this matter? Have we eaten at all at the king's expense? Or has he given us any gift? But the people of Israel answered the people of Judah, We have ten shares in the king, and in David also we have more than you. Why then did you despise us? Were we not the first to speak of bringing back our king? 
that the words of the people of Judah were fiercer than the words of the people of Israel. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. Now we come to our canticle. We turn to page 52 for the canticle Jesus Saviour. Jesus, Saviour of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Saviour and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. Now we come to our second reading from the Gospel of Mark. And we're reading from Mark, we are reading from Mark chapter 13, and we are reading Mark chapter 12, sorry, verses 35 to 44. Mark 12, 35 to 44. While Jesus was teaching in the temple, he said, How can the scribes say that the Messiah is the son of David? David himself, by the Holy Spirit, declared, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. So how can he be his son? And the large crowd was listening to him with delight. As he taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses, and for the sake of appearance, say long prayers. They will receive the greatest condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. So let us now reflect on this reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 35 to 44. We find that Jesus is in Jerusalem. He is in the temple, and uh, clearly, uh, there's clearly a large crowd there listening to Jesus' teaching. And it seems that Jesus is speaking about the scribes. Now, the scribes are supposed to be, you know, by, by their very training, they're supposed to be very much versed in the scriptures. And they should be able to explain the scriptures and all that it means to to the people. They also were essentially lawyers as well, so that they would be able to advise and help people who, especially widows, in their time to help them in terms of ensuring that they, they don't lose their property. Because in those days, of course, without a husband, one a woman is really in a very vulnerable position. So Jesus is criticizing the scribes, and it seems that he begins 
in our reading today by pointing out that the scribes should be very knowledgeable about the scriptures, but they seem not to have a full understanding of what the Messiah is. And then he goes on to, to warn the people. Beware, he says, of these very scribes who walk around, you know, seeking, you know, the approbation of people, seeking honor. You know, they want to, they walk around in their long robes, you know, saying who they are, and they expect to be greeted, you know, with, with respect. And, and people, you know, show them, you know, when, when it comes to functions, they want all the best places. You know, these scribes are looking just, you know, to be recognized, for recognition, for who they are and for how wise they are. Jesus is warning the people, these very scribes, he started off by suggesting that they don't have quite a, an understanding of who the Messiah is in the first place. And then he goes on to warn them about these scribes. He says that these very scribes were supposed to be religious leaders of the people. They are really corrupt. They devour widows' houses. And that goes back to the point mentioned earlier where you know, widows without a husband are in a very vulnerable position, and if they, there was property, these, which you know was to be organized, family family property, property of the departed husband, they scribes rather than helping to ensure that the widows don't lose anything and get everything coming to them, they in fact Jesus says devour widows' houses. So they are corrupt. And they will, in other words, Jesus is saying to the people that they have to be very careful about the, all the appearances of holiness, the appearances of leadership. They simply want recognition, but deep down in their hearts, they're concerned about themselves. They also say long prayers, you know, when they have functions. They go on and on, very long prayers for the sake of appearance. Again, they just seek recognition. They want to be recognized as very holy people. But Jesus says to, to, to the crowds, beware of the scribes. And then he goes on to, as he and the disciples later on are sitting in the temple, they're in a part of the temple um, opposite the treasury, and they're looking at people who are coming into the temple and bring in the offerings. And we are told that they put their, their coins into um, you know, an apparatus, if you want, where the coins go down in a metal tube to the bottom where they are collected. And in the meantime, the coins make quite a noise as they go down. And so those people who are there for the show as well, want to show how much they're given, they would put in their coins, of course, their large amounts, and they would, a tremendous noise will be made, and everybody will know how, you know how much they have contributed. And Jesus is looking there with his disciples, and they're looking at all those people who are coming in, and who are making their large contributions, with the huge noises going down that system. And there comes a widow <coughs> in the midst of it all. And this widow has only a few coins, the lowest of, of lowest value. And of course her, her contribution will make minimal noise. And Jesus, as he looks on to that scene, uh, makes a point. Truly I tell you, Jesus says to his disciples, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. They have a lot and they can give a lot. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had. All she had to live on. So Jesus is making the point that in terms of generosity, in terms of our respect, Points to God, this this widow who only had a few small coins has given much more than all the others who gave because they have more they gave more, but 
was it sacrificial given? Were they given, you know, out of a, a response to God's generosity to them? Were they given as a response to God's love that they have experienced? That is the question. When we, we they, they, in that time, of course, Jesus is saying, is, the point, is making the point, which is for us today as well. We, we, the resources we have, our time, our talent, and our money, to what extent are we given? Is, are we given sacrificially? Are we given out of a response, a genuine response of love to God for his goodness to us? That really is the question. Are we given because we have and it, we don't, it doesn't make a difference to us? It doesn't make a huge difference to us. We, can, we, have, we have enough and we can give some of what we have. Is it something that we have carefully prayed about and thought out what we will give? to God, of our talents, so that God's church might, might, you know, really make a serious influence in the lives of others, because we can give of the talents that we have to help our children grow, and to even adults as well, to contribute to our senior citizens in their lives, to make our church one that will the people, where people can grow into the fullness of their potential. To make our church and our God attractive to people. People who want to come to know God because we are given of our talents, our abilities in teaching, using the skills we have that will help people to grow, especially our young people, to, to the fullness of their potential, all aspects of their, of their lives. Are we given of our money so that our church will be able to really you know, impact on the lives of people, especially those who are in need? Are we given of our time and talent to those in our society, in areas of our society especially, where there is need for the correct influence to shape young lives? Or are we leaving those who are uh, criminally bent to, to be the influencers of our young people. In our schools, are we, are we making an effort, a, a sacrificial kind of effort, to give some time so that we might be able to really help our schools to nurture our children into the, to become the best that they can be as God's children? So those are the questions for us. Are we, you know, we, we, we may be given, but we are just given, you know, without thinking about what, what we are doing. We just, we are not given out of a deep response to God, God's love for us. We are not given sacrificially. We are given of time and talent and money where it doesn't really have, affect us very much. So that widow is the one that Jesus highlights for us. When we are given, are we given all that we are able to give? We might be given a lot, but is that all that we are able to give? Is that a sacrificial response, a loving response to God's love for us and to God's provision for us? That is the question that we ask when we think of time, our talents and our treasures. Jesus says, this woman gave all that she had. They gave out of their abundance. Question for us is, how are we given? The Lord be with you. We continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 42 of our Books of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We come now to our collect for today. We turn to page 177 of our Books of Common Prayer for the College for Proper 15. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue in prayer. O oh God, our Father, you've bidden light to shine out of darkness and have awakened us again to praise your goodness and to seek your grace. Make us children of the light and of the day, that our lives be open to your glory. We may shine as lights in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arm of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we reaching forth our hands in love may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of of your name. Amen. And we continue in prayer as we pray for God's peace in every part of the world, in every place where there is strife, where there is suffering, where there are natural disasters, where there are oppressive governments. We pray for God's presence, God's peace and love, and God's strength and courage and hope to all people who live under these conditions of stress. We pray for God's church worldwide and for all ministers of God's word and sacraments. May God continue to inspire his ministers and help them to be like lights and to serve people in the way that God would want them to do so. In our Anglican communion, we pray for the Most Reverend Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, we pray for all the primates in all the provinces of our communion, and especially in the church in the province of the West Indies, our church. We pray for our Archbishop and for all the bishops of our various dioceses. We pray especially in our own diocese of Trinidad and Tobago for our Bishop Claude, for God continued blessing, guidance, and inspiration upon him as he leaves the church at this particular time. We pray for all our clergy and all our people in the various parishes in which we we work, we pray for God's inspiration upon us as we use the resources we have, that God has given us to touch the lives of his people and bring them to an understanding of how God would want us all to live. We pray for our country of Trinidad and Tobago. May God's, God's hand continue to be upon us. May he bless our leaders, our president, our prime minister, members of parliament, ministers of government, all those in the public and private sector who make the decisions that affect our lives. May they seek God's guidance in making their decisions. For those who are called to deliver services in our health sector, in our education sector, in our public sector, in every area of our national life, we pray that they will be concerned about those who need these services and would go the extra mile to to bring help. We continue to pray for all those who are in need of any kind today. For those who are victims of crime, 
I will pray for them. Those who have lost loved ones to murder, natural causes or accidents, and at this time are in, in need of consolation. We pray your hand upon them, Lord. For those who are sick and crying out for healing. For those who are awakened to a day where they do not know where their next meal will come from. For families where there is strife and brokenness. For young people who are going astray. For senior citizens who need our help. We pray, Lord, that you will open our hearts, open our eyes, that we might see and respond to the needs of those who are around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue with the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Consecrated.